I want to ask you this, um, and correct me if I do stereotype you in a, in a different way, but you grew up um, as um, someone that's un, un, that your parents were believers. Yep. So you grew up in church. You're, uh, I don't want to call you a church kid, but you were, you were so to no, speak. No, I was a church kid. You were a church yeah. kid. <laughs> Um, and now you're you're a pastor and you're teaching you know kids, um, especially the high school, college age, where they're really starting to stand on their own and, and make choices. Um, how did you avoid the stereotypes of you know what the world does or what we tend to see of uh, being a church kid and you know rebelling and, and taking let me put it this way taking the relationship with Christ and um, um, for for granted and not being the real deal, you know what I mean. If we call a, a church person, how did you come through that and and be the real deal and actually be in love with the Lord and become a pastor and all that stuff, even though you grew up in church? <laughs> That's uh, you know, I would say I have this secret formula, but I mean it's really the grace of God. I know it's something that God puts in my heart all the time to share in terms of trying to reach people who are in, in a similar situation because i I'm, I'm even fearful for my own children i'm sure you are too that yeah. have kids grow up in a christian home that don't experience sin the way like my parents did you know my parents weren't believers when they when they grew up they got saved basically right around the time that i was born and so you know they have some history they have bad baggage in their past and they've got a lot of mistakes that they've made and you know when the gospel is presented to someone like that, you know it's. I'm thinking of the story in Luke where, you know, Jesus talks to Simon and says, you know, this woman's been forgiven much. That's why she loves much. And it's this, you know, for me, that's always been a struggle: is how do I get over that hump of thinking that I'm okay and thinking that you know because I grew up in a home that I'm you know or I have a religious heritage that somehow that I'm all right with God. And you know it's really just recognizing how sinful we are recognizing how much we've been saved from and I think also not comparing ourselves to others not comparing ourselves to what someone else has done and and keeping that attitude of okay God uh, you know if you didn't save me just because I have a nice life doesn't mean that I'm going to heaven it's like you had God had to come down and shed his blood for me and I think that you know more than anything it's been something that God has really worked in my heart over the years is really understanding his grace really understanding how much of a sinner I am, how much I need him. And, you know, to kind of share that with, again, people in my similar circumstances, a lot of kids who grew up in Calvary Chapel that, again, know the Bible really well, but it's like there's a head knowledge and then there's a heart. Right. You know, it's like that's the huge thing is getting people to get past just the head knowledge of who God is and to have a relationship with them. And once you do that, once you recognize what God has done for you, how much he's given for you, what is his love, and just, again, going through the scripture and seeing what, how, just, again, what our sin is to him and how he abhors it, you begin to, you know, have a different heart towards it, different perspective towards God. And, you know, that was, I'm just, I, I like I said, it's grace. I, you know, for me, I'm just really thankful to God that I didn't have to go through this portion of my life where I just rebelled against him and had all this sin in my life and all this baggage but at the same time I'm just super humble about it and what I mean by I'm not saying I'm a humble guy but I'm just like really like God I can't believe you did this for me very thankful and I don't just I don't take it for granted if that if that makes sense like I don't just assume because God has saved me and because I've done th some nice things that you know my my life is going to be better I really do understand that it's going to be the grace of God and it's going to be his work in my life. So, all right. So now that we're, you know, you're a parent, I'm a parent now. Um, is there anything that you're doing because now you have that third generation? Um, and I know you've adopted and I know about your story, but uh, for parents who um, are Christians and like you talked about, my parents were the same way where they brought baggage from the world. And so they understood the difference. Mm -hmm. What do you do as parent? to teach your kids now that what I call street smarts in the sense of that when I, when I think of church kids, a lot of them, they're just not. And when I say street smarts, it's kind of a law enforcement thing, but no, it's, it's the idea of being wise about the world, you yeah. know, and not just walking around in my church filled glasses because I have a sheltered life, which is all fantastic. But as a parent, my job is to help them go and do battle, right? Not to yeah. go out in the world and get destroyed. Is there anything that you're doing? as a parent from young and as I grow up to make sure that doesn't happen as they are, because my kids are church kids too, to prevent that? 
Yeah, uh, you know, you, you kind of nailed it on the head when you said it's a battle. And so I think preparing our kids for that, getting them to understand, you know, one of the verses that came to mind when you said that, you know, we want them to be wise concerning the ways of the world is when Jesus said that we're to be wise as serpents, harmless as doves. And I think a lot of Christians have kind of disarmed their kids sometimes because they want them to be harmless stuffs, but they don't want to have any grit. Yes. They don't want them to have any, like, you know, understanding of what evil is. Yeah. And so they shelter it from them rather than confront them with it and have them be able to conquer it. Yeah, like I've even had, and this has happened here, is where parents will get offended because of some of the kids' attitudes in uh, Sunday school or whatever event. And it's like they'll, they'll, they'll pull them from the group because they don't want them to get influenced by that. And what they don't understand is not only are they not learning how, how to deal with um, non-believers in the world, but look at what kind of attitude yeah. they're portraying. You know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. I did this with youth ministry for years. We okay. would have parents who wouldn't bring their kids to our junior high group because right. there's some kid who's, you know. Difficult. Yeah, difficult. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I what I just would minister to them about is the fact that, you know, this is probably the safest environment your kid's going to be in with non a non-believer and we're going to you know be there to correct this kid and all this stuff he's not going to have a chance if he's out in the world i mean he's going to you know either be wiped out by these people or join them whole cloth and and, yep. and really that's where it typically go goes and so you know with my kids you know um, he said we have a, our own story with adoption and that's going to play into even my biological children's story and i'm really thankful for that because we have two kids that are older um one's 16 now just turned 16 today actually and a 13 year old but we adopted them when they're a little bit older and they had a lot of baggage they had a lot of things that they had experienced because of unbelieving parents and different circumstances in their life that, of abuse and neglect and stuff and so they know exactly what the world is like and we're able to with those two just really quickly correct their attitudes and stuff because we're like you know that this is going to lead down this path and go this way and you've seen it firsthand and you know what that's going to lead to and they don't want it and so i'm very thankful for that in their lives but i'm also thankful for you know one day when my younger kids are a little bit older that we can point to their brothers and say you know I think that's some of it is finding some, you know, learning how to learn lessons through the experience of others. I've always taught that in junior high with kids. You can learn things one of two ways, the hard way or the easy way. The easy way is to learn it by the experience of others. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, most people have to learn it the hard way. So, right. Well, that's real wisdom, right? You know, the book of Proverbs. I mean, obviously, the beginning wisdom is the fear of the Lord, but it's the idea of learning it through the word and not having to experience it because your life is destroyed through the experiences, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Are you good on that? Yeah.